Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another episode of Cookie Cast. Today on Cookie Cast, Laces Out Podcast, which is all your NFL goodness, American football, football from over the pond, however you want to slice it, it's American football, it's the NFL podcast. Week two, we had our preseason podcast, and already we've got guests. Guests, people. Guest predictors, that's what we like to see. Season long picks. That's also what we want to see. Get used to the guests, because in theory, this is a podcast for guests. Before we get started, please do consider like, share, subscribe and comment. Drop any reviews you want to drop. And uh, if you know somebody that likes NFL, send this podcast their way. Right, enough of that, let's get started. So here we go. This is CookieCast, Laces Out. Recording in progress. Ba, 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 ba. I still want them. I, I I might have to get somebody to make the music so that it's like on like a Casio keyboard or something, so that it's like fair use. Will we still get sued? Do you reckon you'd have to get around it by playing it in a different key? So rather than <laughs> you'd have to sort of do it like, but. I'll say just in a different key, but you know, then it wouldn't be the ESPN theme. Well, I think we've already found that Andy clearly just needs to edit that bit now, and there we have it. Yes, that's how they got round uh, round the Star Wars thing in space. They just sang it themselves, and then it was their their own version, and they could use it. Oh, surely they wouldn't need to worry about it in space because no one can hear sound in space. I think I think we've switched podcasts. Welcome uh, to welcome to BS Cast, making a long uh, long awaited return. I still got one of those in the bank that needs putting. I was just thinking that the other day. We're we're really getting off topic now, but anyway, welcome along, ladies and gentlemen. It's your uh, your second week of uh, of NFL based uh, updates and previews and assorted nonsense. Can I can I just take a personal moment for myself? To talk about some some seasons are different to other seasons. Some seasons it's like, hmm, football's back. Other seasons it's like, hmm, football's back. I don't know what it was, but this this past Sunday, full mast, full mast, absolute full mast was like, fuck, like sitting there just like fuck yeah, like some of those games. I was like, this is it. This is what's been missing. Fucking come on. Excuse my language for all of you kiddies out there. But come on, football. It's back, baby. And what a week. Paul, tell these people what they missed or what they enjoyed. Well, I think you just covered it there, didn't you? Pretty much. What, what, what didn't they miss? So, so many things happening, which we will come on to slightly later in the podcast. But obviously, we're not alone, Andrew. No. For those of you listening to the podcast, you may have only heard. Oh no, I think he has meant he has said a couple of bits so far. Um. So, for those of you listening to the podcast, welcome along our uh, first guest of the season. Well, I say first guest of the season. First guest of the season making an appearance after last week's guest. She just basically fully just refused to be seen on camera. Also known as Spider um, it. Which we'll come to later on because obviously she put in her pics and that might get brought up at some point. Well, yes, welcome along, uh, podcast alum from, from such other cookie cast favourites as Getting Over, the Wrestling Podcast, the Football Podcast. He's been on a couple of BS casts in the past. He's a, he's a seasoned pro. Welcome along, Mr. Stuart Woodmansey, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, thank you very much. He's donned his pads, his helmet, his, uh, his cleats, if you will. And he's going to talk some NFL football with us for this week. Which, 
leads me on to his season-long predictions to go alongside myself and Mr. Cooks. I won't give him our predictions so as to not sway him in his thought process. But Mr. Uh, Mr. Robinson, if you were if you were hard pressed to pick, so who do you see as being the Super Bowl teams for this upcoming season? Hmm. So I am going to go with, and it's I think it might have got brought up last season when we did this. That they probably should be thinking about it by now, but still haven't managed it. So I'm going to go for the Bills as one of my teams. Interesting. And because he clearly is inevitable, we will go with Tampa Bay for the other team. (sighs) That sounds like a fantastic choice. So for those of the for those of you who obviously paid attention to last week's podcast, that's that would be a repeat of someone's prediction, which is impressive considering we've only had two <laughs> predictions so far. Uh, but yes, Mister Mister Cook and Mister Woodmancy both in the same boat of a Buffalo Bills Tampa Bay Buccaneers Super Bowl. May I ask who you believe will win? Even though I've got him in fantasy, I don't want Brady to win again. <laughs> so I'd, I'd like, I'd like the Bills to win. Like or are picking? Oh, okay, I'll, I'll pick. Why not? N- nail that to the fence and all that. So, whilst he has got the same Super Bowl as Mister Cook, he has gone for a different winner in a similar vein to. Myself, as I have also gone for the Buffalo Bills versus the Los Angeles Rams to win the Super Bowl. And your Super Bowl MVP pick would be? It feels a bit weird saying this, but Josh Allen then, because he's the quarterback, isn't he? Why, why, why is that weird to say that? I don't know. I just. I, I don't know. I don't know enough about it, but I don't know. I don't necessarily have him in that bracket, but I suppose. I mean. If they're going to win it, he's going to be the linchpin to it, surely. So exactly, he is also who I have picked to be the Super Bowl MVP. So ah, maybe that's why it felt dirty then. I'm ah, well, you yeah. see, there you go. Hey. So that's that's your Super Bowl prediction. What about your league regular season MVP? Oh God, I I could be a complete homer and just hope that he has. A better, an even better season than he had last season, and say Justin Herbert maybe. Ooh, I like that. So, I believe Tasty. the betting at the minute Justin Herbert is in the top five of the betting. He may even be top three after this past weekend. I think after how well he did last year and. For, if they if they're gonna sort of improve, they've got to make the playoffs this time around. So, if well, they considering did... the, considering there were what there were one game away, yeah. well one one overtime period away, well yeah. one minute away. Let's let's not beat around the bush um, from making it last time. So yeah, you'd certainly say that if they don't make it, it's um, they've had a bit of a nightmare, really. But mm. um, yeah, it's a solid pick. It goes alongside Andy going for the three-peat for Mr. Rogers uh, and me going for uh, pa- Patty Mahomes to get back on his perch as the uh, creme de la creme of the quarterback position in the end. That concludes our season-long predictions from our guest, um, which I believe just leads us to uh, last week games. Really? So, we started off with the uh, the defending Super Bowl champion Rams opening the season at home to everyone's favourite for the uh, for the upcoming Super Bowl season of Buffalo Bills, and um, it, it 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 wasn't really much of a contest to be honest with you. This was a bit of a bit of a one sided affair where uh, the, the Bills kind of put the Rams to the sword and uh, took on the points. Um, 
no no shocks across the board predictions wise. Myself, yourself, and last last week's guest predictor, Miss Brinton, uh, all picked the Bills. A little tick there. Um, the Panthers at home to the Browns with Baker Mayfield win the uh, in the well for want of a better phrase the U game. Couldn't get it done. Obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm coming into this uh, only knowing half of the story, as uh, unfortunately I was unable to watch um, any, pretty much, of the of the coverage on Sunday, as I was away at a, uh, a gig in Middlesbrough. Um, so I'm, I'm only getting my knowledge from the uh, the fantasy app that I could see in my hand. And I was I was quite enjoying the coverage on Red Zone, where every time they went to that game, it wasn't necessarily the action, it was just Baker's angry little face. <laughs> Well, he'll have to uh, he'll have to wait until the next time he plays the Browns to hopefully get his revenge. Uh, but the Browns sort of win on that one. Uh, yourself and Amy had picked the Browns. I had picked the Panthers like a common fool, so no points for me there. Uh, the Saints took on the Falcons in Atlanta and got the win there. To, to point there, uh, I could do this for the rest of the games and go through it one by one, but we'd be here till Christmas. So, needless to say, sixteen games played. 16 games predicted in last place with 8 out of 16 picks correct. It's 50%. 50%. It's not a great start to the season for Mr. Paul Williams. Disappointing. Wow. Tying and therefore getting a win each or half a win if you will with 10 out of 16 picks correct, it is Mr. Andrew Cook and guest predictor, Amy Brinton. So, from a long time, long season looking perspective, long we have myself yet to get off the mark, Andy and the collective guest, if you will, on half a point. Now, something we started last week, Mr. Cook... If you want to give the uh, if you want to give the listeners and Mr. Woman see a little rundown of uh, the way our new segment's going to uh, going to go. So this is in its infancy, and we will surely be working out the kinks for however long this actually stays live. And I hold no responsibility for this, as I partially stole it from somewhere else and then massaged it to make it not quite the same. This season, myself and Paul are going to go head to head now. Stu's like, uh, I'm sorry, what? Because there aren't enough games for the guest, and you'll see why. Myself and Paul get four picks each. You have to pick one of the games, or four of the games in actual fact, that you can 100% say is going to be a winner. So, for example, anybody playing the Jets? Anybody playing the Jaguars? Uh, anyway, you get the idea. So, once you've made your pick, that game is off the table. So the other person cannot pick the other team or vice versa sort of thing. There are 16 games most weeks, but we're going to start seeing some 15 games and that's going to make things just that little bit more interesting. So, week in, week out, myself and Paul will pick four games. Each, where we can say with one hundred percent guaranteed, nobody's gonna gonna go against us. We are gonna say that this is gonna be the team that's gonna win that game. Each week, if you get it right, you get a point. If you get it wrong, you don't get a point. And the the most you can get week after week is four points. Whoever something that I f- forgot to mention last week, which was becomes relevant this week is if you for example let's say i got two points last week but paul got four i get to pick first keeps it just that little bit more even along the way if after two or three weeks paul's romping ahead i still get first pick and that's that so we made some selections last week four games each how did that turn out for us mr williams so of the 16 games, Andy obviously picked four, I picked four. 
Andy's four teams were the Eagles, the Bengals, the Chiefs and the Colts. My four teams were the Ravens, the Titans, the Chargers and the Saints. Uh, sadly, the Titans did not beat the Giants and the Bengals did not beat the Steelers. So the maximum myself and Andy can get is three. I did get points for the Ravens, the Chargers and the Saints taking care of business, so three points for myself. Andy had the Eagles and the Chiefs getting the Ws. However, the Colts didn't win. They also didn't lose. Damn it. So I don't really didn't know think what of this to one. do with that one. Um, I've, I've put it down as, an, as, a, as a loss. So, the with with, that, with with the breakdown I just gave is 100% certainty. So, in a draw situation, it would have to go down as a loss. So from the from the, the the game perspective, obviously Andy's got himself two points for the first week, and I've got myself three. So when we come on to doing the four picks each for next week, Andy will pick first. And speaking of next week, we move on to those games right now. So we open week two in the NFL with the Kansas City Chiefs at home to the Los Angeles Chargers. Some might say sneaky pick of the week game. I mean, I'd certainly be in that in that regard. Um, even though he is a self-professed Charger fan, Mr. Wilbensey does not like the look of this game for his boys in baby blue. And he has gone along with myself and Mr. Cook for a Chiefs win. I just, it's the whole thing. I mean, you said it a little uh, minute or two ago about Mahomes getting back on the wagon. Uh, he looked, from what I saw, he looked all right this week. So, just, uh, it made me a little nervous, shall we say. But, yeah, I, I, as much as I would, I would love it if, uh, if it's, Herbert. It's an inter conference game as well. So, obviously, they're both AFC. West teams a little bit needle because they play each other twice a season. So mm. yeah, I, I like the, I like the Chargers this season. I think I think as we get, as we mentioned earlier, Justin Herbert, very very decent shout for MVP. If they get everything clicking, they could be in with a shot of making the postseason and going deep. Um, they are missing Keenan Allen. For this week, I did notice after he came off injured in the game against the Raiders on Sunday, yeah. so he'll be a big miss for him. So he's lost a weapon there. Um, but yeah, we've all gone for the Chiefs. No surprise. We move on to the Sunday slate of games, and we have the Jets, the New York Jets, traveling to Cleveland to take on the Cleveland Browns. Uh, no great surprises there. We've all picked the Browns to get the win. Uh, over the Jets. Obviously, the Jets have uh, announced today that they're sticking with Joe Flacco as a starting quarterback. So, just <laughs> you see, just I was gonna, I was gonna launch into something, and I was like, ah, "Do we need? Do we need to go through our, our how many Jets jerseys have you ordered in the last week, Paul? Come on, talk to us. Tell us the truth." The Miami Dolphins travelling to Baltimore to take on the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, no great surprises here. Ravens at home, very strong. We've all taken the Ravens. Dolphins look good against the Patriots last week. Obviously, <laughs> or, um, is that one of those things them. that it's just like it, it's kind of written in the stars? They could have sent out like four guys who had who were all injured. And they'd be like, we've never seen this before in NFL history, but four men beat the entire <laughs> New England Patriots. It's just, it's just a thing. It, it does seem at the minute as if the Dolphins have just got the Pats number. Um, I think that's four in a row they've won against me. It's the, I think Tua, I, I, I don't know if I've made this stat, up, this stat up, but he's the first, I think he's the first quarterback to ever go 4-0 in his first four starts against the Pats. Again, I might have made that start up. I mean, it would but, make sense. Um, 
Yeah, I think I think the Ravens will just have too much from at home. The next game is our first difference of opinion game. So we've got the Washington Commanders traveling to Detroit to take on the Lions. You two have both gone for the Commanders here. I think the Lions might just have enough to get this one done. Just because they looked quite good against the Eagles, and the Eagles are a much better team than the Commanders on paper. Just my thoughts. Obviously, you two disagree. Next up, we have the Indianapolis Colts traveling to Jacksonville to take on the Jaguars. We've all gone for the Colts in this one. I'm pretty sure they're on a three-game losing streak against the Jags. But it's the Jags. Watch this space. You never know. Uh, next up, we've got the Bucks taking on the Saints in New Orleans. Uh, this is another one where we've got a difference of opinion. Again, you two have both gone for the Buccaneers to get the win on this one. I've gone for the Saints for the exact same reason that the Saints have just had the Bucks number for the last couple of seasons, apart from that playoff loss. Um, the Saints have taken care of business on pretty much every occasion. Um, Panthers travel to New York to take on the Giants. Myself and Stu have picked the Giants in this one, whereas Andy has gone for the Panthers. Obviously, thinking that Baker's going to turn everything around. I really struggled with this one because I really liked what I saw from the Giants at the weekend. There was there was a point in time where they stopped Derek Henry flat. Mm. And I was like, ooh. Because I've been saying for two years at least, any team that goes up against them, the the one thing that should be drilled into them from the very start is stop. Derek Henry, because if you stop Derek Henry, that that's that that's that done, and that stop was tasty. Yep. And I'm like, uh, are, are the Giants good this season? It was like a massive hit, and he was just flat on his back, wasn't he? He was like, like that just happened. Yeah. Well, it's because he's normally the one laying down the hits, isn't he? Uh, we'll just rattle through the remainder of the games. Uh, we've all gone for the Steelers to beat the Pats in Pittsburgh. We've all gone for the Rams to take care of business at home to the Falcons. Same with the 49ers at home to the Seahawks. Um, the Bengals to go to Dallas and get a win against the Cowboys. Obviously, they'll be without Dak Prescott for the next however many weeks. Uh, we've all gone for the Broncos to take care of business against the Texans at home. Uh, we've got the Raiders to beat the Cardinals. The last game that's got a difference of opinion, we've got the, the Chicago Bears traveling to Green Bay to take on the Packers. Myself and Andy feel that Rodgers will bounce back with a win. Stuber's obviously seen something he likes in the Bears or something he dislikes in the Pack. What's, what's your thinking there? I'll be honest, I figured that you guys would pick Green Bay, so I just went for points on this one. Aha! I see. <laughs> I believe... I, I mean, I could have done it on an easier game, I'm sure, but I thought, meh. I believe that is the that is the NFL's most played game, most played fixture, the Bears versus the Packers. Plus as well, is it Aaron Rodgers quarterbacking, or is it the missing member of Kings of Leon these days? Because I am not sure. Uh, the, you there were, first there were a lot of questions around that game. What is What is the factor that's gone wrong there? Some uh, some some deeply deeply troubling uh, troubling times for Mister uh, Two Time Defending MVP of the week. Our last two games of the week, I believe, are both Monday night fixtures. Where we have the Tennessee Titans travelling to Buffalo to get all sorts of whacked on by the Bills. We've all gone for the Bills to take care of that one there, and we finish the week with the Minnesota Vikings travelling to Philadelphia to take on the Eagles, and we've all gone for the Vikings. Eagles looked at, obviously they got the win against the Lions on the opening day, but I thought they looked a bit suspect personally. Yeah. Um, I've, I've 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 inadvertently done the the podcast in the wrong order, so I'll apologise now for that, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, I will slap myself on the wrists and must must do better for next week's instalment. But whilst I compose myself and we uh, will come back to do our side bet picks of four each and give you a little stats 
from last week's games, we are going to take a momentary break just to uh, refresh ourselves. I obviously need to uh, give myself a long, hard look in the mirror. And then we'll come back and give you all those details. Join us. Recording in progress. Well, she's lying, is she? Uh, so, we return to week two in the NFL. As previously stated, I've been a very naughty boy and I've done the podcast out of order because, what can I say, I'm, I'm a common fool. Um, so whilst whilst we have gone through our game two, uh, sorry, game week two picks, we do still have the side bet week uh, side bet week two picks to pick up. So as Mister Cook was unsuccessful in getting a weak win last week, he does get the joy of picking the first game that he has as his banker. So Mister Cook, of all the sixteen games, which is your first pick? shall we say, draft style. Ah, oh, yeah, of course. Of course it would be loading. Oh, you're going to do me like, you're going to do me like that. That's, I'm unprepared, Mr. Williams. I apologise. The dead air is deafening. Oh, dear um, me. As you can see by the glow, uh, I am trying to work with these Technological restraints. Week two pick number one is, I can say with a hundred percent, I have picked the Cleveland Browns to beat the New York Jets. Cleveland Browns is. Andrew Cook's first pick overall. Obviously, as we try to snake this mother, I will now pick two games. So, my first one is I will pick the Los Angeles Rams to beat the Atlanta Falcons. And my second game... Hmm... I'll go for the Steelers to beat the Patriots. Did anyone else see the Twitter beef that went on between the Bengals and the Steelers? So apparently the Bengals had changed their Twitter profile to um, what do they even steal? So the Steelers <laughs> uh, admin just came straight back over the top with the win. <laughs> It was like, yeah, it was a bit like, whew, that's 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 both stones. Um, Your next two picks, Mr. Cook. With my second pick of the second week draft, I pick the Baltimore Ravens to beat the Miami Dolphins. Solid pick. Solid pick. Your third pick? My third pick will be the Cincinnati Bengals to beat the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, the old cowpokes looking a little bit suspect no, uh, with no Dak and Cooper Rush as the, uh, as the starter for at least the next week or possibly two. Right, so I have two games left to pick. Attention. Could be cut with a knife. I will go for the San Francisco 49ers to beat the Seattle Seahawks. Interesting. Oh, yes, there we go. And finally, I will have the Buffalo Bills to beat the Tennessee Titans. That's what. That's where it is. That's that's the sweet spot. Okay. Your final pick. Okay, okay, okay. In that case, I know that you've said that they've got their number, but the Indianapolis Colts to beat the junk, I mean the Jacksonville Jaguars. 
I don't want to alarm you, Andrew, but you picked the Colts as your fourth team last week. <laughs> and they very much pissed on your chips, so to speak. Yeah, but they weren't playing the Jaguars last week, so I think <laughs> it's okay. That concludes the uh, week two predictions and uh, the side bet, hustle, whatever you want to call it. However, as previously discussed, we have got some delicious, tasty stats to go through that I believe Mr. Cook has been provided by everyone's favourite stats mistress. So... um I don't know if anybody's aware, but in the off season, the stats mistress had mentioned. Um, I don't want to call it doing a Brady, but she had talked about hanging up the cleats, um, putting the putting the book of stats down, and walking away. Um, but myself, Paul, other people here at the Laces Out podcast managed to convince her that she still had another year at least in her, and she's back with week one. 2022 stats she does throw out some major major props to Nate Davis of USA Today and the stats week 1 2022 look like this and the first one's a juicy big one now 45 Brady officially became the oldest quarterback to start an NFL game and improved to 7 and 0 all time against the Dallas Cowboys after the Tampa Bay Buccaneers cruised 19 to 3 on Sunday night the thumb injury suffered by Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott requiring surgery leaves Dallas to defend its NFC East title through a combination of quarterbacks Cooper Rush and Will Greer there it is. There's your first stat of 2022. Number two, for the first time since 2007, there were no rookie quarterbacks in any starting lineup on opening weekend. Now that right there is a juicy stat. Number three, the Los Angeles Rams and the Cincinnati Bengals, who met seven months ago in Super Bowl 56, both lost. It's the first time this century that the previous season's Super Sunday participants both open 0-1. And, and my final stat. Number four. After undergoing an appendectomy at the start of training camp while trying to mesh with a front five that underwent an O line deck to me in the off season with four new starters. Perhaps Bengals quarterback Joe Burrow should have anticipated a rough 2022 debut. But his career worst five turnovers, including four interceptions, were two more than he'd ever surrendered in an NFL game. Bad news. Paul, is it over to you? Certainly is, so I will pick it up with two years in a row. Quarterback Aaron Rodgers with 195 yards, no touchdowns, and an interception. And the Green Bay Packers have been trash in week one. It's just one game, but is it fair to say that Rodgers, a four time MVP and wide receiver Devontae Adams, should have fought to save their football marriage? Next up, could this finally be the year the league gets a 2,000-yard 2000 2000 receiver? Minnesota Vikings star Justin Jefferson needs to average 113.5 yards per game the rest of the way after his 184-yard two-touchdown outburst helped take down Rodgers and the pack. The Kansas City Chiefs' Patrick Mahomes went off for 360 yards and five touchdown passes in Arizona on Sunday ensuring that Buffalo Bills counterpart Josh Allen won't be running away and hiding with the MVP award just gonna just gonna sit there and just uh, bask in the glory of a, a season long pick well done for me 
Welcome back, Saints wide receiver Michael Thomas. The former All-Pro, plagued by injuries in recent seasons, had his first two-touchdown game in nearly three years. Both of Sunday's scores coming in the fourth quarter as New Orleans signed to survive the Falcons in Atlanta, winning 27-26. to And finally for me, Von Miller posted two sacks Thursday night in his Bills debut, matching what he did in his final game with the Rams, a winning effort in Super Bowl 56. Miller's new look crew took down his former teammate Matthew Stafford seven times. Buffalo had the league's top-ranked defence in 2021, they only averaged 2.47 sacks per game in the regular season. Early indications are that Miller could be the final piece to the long-awaited Super Bowl formula in Western New York. Can we we'll just out the stats by? Who? Can we just take a minute to to just appreciate how good Von Miller looked in that team? I saw I saw something. <laughs> I saw something that was on Twitter when the fact that he took his helmet off and the uh, choice of the haircut triangle? at the back of his head. Do you see his explanation the- for it? He'd, he'd, so it had been commented on and then he's posted a thing about why he had it. And it's all to do with channeling power. Are you sure they hadn't just watched Squid Game before he went to the hairdressers? Maybe. Either that, or he just he just spent the entire day just doing nothing but through balls on FIFA. <laughs> he, it's a very PlayStation specific joke, that Paul. He you just, got it. He just you looked laughed. so good in that team, and that, those he, sacks I mean, were nice. Let's be honest; he's he's a bit of a monster, and he's obviously gone to a team where he's thinking, "I've got two rings." Two rings is nice. Three, three rings is better. better. Yes, uh, I believe that Mr. Woodman has the uh, has the closing out stats for us for this particular week. Indeed. So, quarterback Matt Ryan's first game with the Indianapolis Colts ended with a 20-20 tie against the Houston Texans. None of Ryan's 222 games with the Falcons wound up deadlocked. Uh, next up, New Panthers quarterback, the aforementioned Baker Mayfield, didn't manage to blow up against his former Browns teammate. However, Mayfield would have pulled out the win if not for a Cleveland player with whom he never played. Browns kicker Cade York's game-winning 58-yard field goal in the final seconds was the longest ever by a rookie in his team's season opener. A fourth-rounder, York is the highest drafted kicker since 2016. I mean, everybody knows it's good to draft a kicker, really, right? Um, so, yeah, the Washington fans got the full Wentz on Sunday. Their new quarterback serving up two interceptions before connecting for two of his four touchdown passes in the final 10 minutes, bringing the commanders back for a 28 22 triumph over Jacksonville. And finally, Jaguars rookie, outside linebacker, Travon Walker, this year's number one pick, became the first drafted player since Watt in 2017 to collect a sack and interception in his NFL debut. That was a good day at the office. We should have probably mentioned a little bit about um, TJ Watt and his torn pectoral, which apparently isn't as bad as it was initially said to be, and he should return a lot sooner than they initially thought. Um, I mean, that's kind of... We've got we've kind of put the cat before the horse with the order, and next week it'll definitely run a lot smoother. But let's just, let's just absorb the fact that football's back. The week one games were delicious. Um, there's there's stuff that I was like, should we, you know, should we get into the thick of it? That um, that that first game, the last game, things like that. There was a weird statement, not statement as such, but a weird thing that had been put out by the Seahawks with like them showing them celebrate them celebrating in the locker room for the win. But the the caption was, nobody thought we were gonna win this game. It's like that's not a great slogan, guys. Not a great one. 
maybe maybe slight change of the wording. Not many people had us down for a win, but we did. You know, something a little bit more in the camp of. Although having watched um, having watched the game back in highlights, the stats mistress was quite adamant that the um, officiating was a little tougher for the Broncos and particularly Russell Wilson than it was maybe for the Seahawks. Don't know about that one. Um, obviously, to 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 go back to the first game of the season. Um, I think it was highlighted in the commentary that the Rams don't look anything like the Super Bowl winning team. There was a mention of a lot of holes. And uh, I may have mentioned in passing that it was nice to see Stafford return into form. Um, one, one, for you, one for you there, Pogs, know that you, you love the Stafford. Um, but, honestly, football's back. It's back. It's back. And that's all. That is actually all that matters um it's for me to thank paul for for being my co-host my ride or die on the nfl podcast paul you can thank Stu. yeah thank you Stu, for joining us this week and for uh, giving us your expertise and picks for the uh, for the season long i mean bridge. if you want to call it that but yeah thanks and for to having complete me. the circle Stu, you can thank uh, it doesn't matter. I just did. I just said thanks for having me. Oh, well, there you go. Good. Beautiful. Good. It's beautiful. Circle of life. Um, unless anybody's got anything. No? Well, that's that then. Week one done. Week two to come. It can only get better until the emergence of me starting to say, well, I mean, the season's practically over, isn't it? I'll save that for next week. <laughs> Get your bingo books out, kids, because there's going to be a lot of that. Right, there we go. That's week one, week two, all the weeks. And uh, we will see you next week. Tatty bye, gents. So there you go. What do you think to that? Big thank you to Stu for being our guest this week. Big thank you to Paul for riding with me. I said all that at the end, so, you know probably shouldn't be going through it again now big thank you to you for watching or listening i can thank you more if you want to just click that like button or if you haven't already subscribe share the podcast around get it out to people you know that want nfl goodies in their life and uh if you if you fancy checking out our website check out ours it's the cookiecast.com there we've got social media links and an email button for you to get in touch with us That's it for this one. Until next time, I'm going to say bye, and I'll see you then.